Welcome to tonight's virtual culinary experience on fall charcuterie. My name is Tim Regan and I'm the executive director of Foodworks here at the Maryland Food Bank. With me tonight are Carly Frank, who is our director of strategic partnerships, and executive chef and director of culinary arts, Chef Monique Jordan, or as we affectionately refer to her around here, Chef Mo. That's right. Carly and Chef Mo uh, are going to share with you tonight about the important work we're doing here in FoodWorks and also with the Maryland Food Bank. And they're going to share some tips and maybe a few chef secrets on what to do with charcuterie in the fall. Carly? <laughs> Thanks, Tim. So um, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. And thank you to our longtime supporters. But also welcome to everyone who's new. I'm hoping you're going to have fun with us. We're going to make a seasonal charcuterie board and um, learn a little bit about food works and the work we're doing here at the Maryland Food Bank. So when I think about charcuterie, and I more broadly think about snacking plates, mm. I think about the holidays and I think about gathering. And when I think about gathering, I think about connecting. And when I think about connecting, I think about the work that we're doing here because we cannot do this work without connecting to our clients, really understanding the challenges and opportunities within food insecurity. So um, why don't we get started talking a little bit about what's on the table. Great. Something about um, snacking boards is that they should be very approachable. Uh, there's nothing on this spread here anywhere that you need a specialty store for at all. In fact, majority of these things came from our pantries. So we've got some dried fruit, fresh fruit, some greenery, um, some chocolate. A lot of these things are sort of the ends of nibs and nabs of um, things in my pantry. Uh, we have some sweet nuts, we have some grapes, dried fruit, some meat, some cheeses. Um, and when it comes to the actual board itself, you can really think outside the box. Anything can be a charcuterie board. This right here, this is just a cutting board, also serves as a charcuterie board. This right here happens to be what we're going to be building on today. Um, was not made for food originally. I saw it and I thought, how convenient. Hmm. This is going to be perfect, great way to get the exact meat and cheese you want right there. Oh, yeah. um, so, uh, and then also when it comes to putting things on the actual plate itself into oh. containers, shop your own recycling bin. This I got out of the recycling bin. We're going to use these later to help make some meat roses. This recycled jar, um, bowl, not meant for a charcuterie board. This, I think, is a votive candle, but can also be a wonderful thing to put some things on. Um, get creative, have fun, and I think that we're going to start with a few cheese tricks. How does that sound? Uh, great Sounds great. Sounds yeah. great. Great. Okay. So the cheeses we have here, we have a soft cheese, a brie. We have a cheddar, I believe an English cheddar. A, uh, another harder cheese and then a goat cheese back here in the back, a spreadable something cheese. Nice. Yeah. So um, with a cheddar, I'm going to show you a few ways we can actually display this. Here, I'm going to give you some of that. Great. Right. I'm going to follow your lead, Carly. Please do. <laughs> Please do. It'll be the first and last time you probably do that. <laughs> so, um, so my style of uh, charcuterie boards happens to be abundant. I like right. it to look full, inviting. I like it to entice people to come together, to connect. Um, but you have to find your own style. And the only way to do that is by just starting. And sometimes when you're looking at a blank board and you're looking at all the things around it, the hardest part is to just start. So one of the easiest ways to show cheese that's super inviting is just sort of take a fork into only a hard cheese. This is really only appropriate for some sort of hard cheese. But just put a fork in it and just sort of twist. Twist. And as you are twisting, I'm going to cut mine into little triangles. Oh, okay. I like that. That's creative. That's creative. So I'm going to just then, again, hardest part, just starting. Just put some cheese on the plate. Don't think too much about it. Find what feels natural to you. Think about the way that you like to approach food and apply that to the way that you display it too. So while you're cutting into triangles okay. and while I'm sort of um, mixing and matching here with some hard cheese and making these little organic chunks, 
Tim, I want you to tell me a little bit about the Food Works renovation, um, a little bit hmm. about how we got started with the renovation and really where we are today. Sure, <clears throat> I'm glad to. Um, so we, the, our construction project really began well more than a year ago um, when we hired an architect um, and bid out the project, um, then selected the architect, and then went through the same process with the construction companies. Um, in July, we actually started the construction itself, um, which required the Food Works uh, team, Mo and myself and our fellow uh, uh, leaders in the Food Works team, to move into a set of construction trailers in the back. Three beautiful <laughs> double wides, all connected, uh, with our classroom in the center. Um, while our uh, construction project got started in our old office mm -hmm. and classroom space. Um, you know, we, we're, we're still um, actually probably a year or more away from the entire project being done, but the Food Works Kitchen actually is the first part of this project, and we expect for the construction um, of the new kitchen to, to be done in the end of the spring, uh, maybe early summer, um, so we'll be we're going to move back partially, um, we hope, uh, uh, at the end of March, and then move back in fully um, by, by the middle part of, uh, of next year. Um, Great. Now, I'm going to just take a pause to get back to cheese talk Great. for a second here. So, um, Chef Mo just decided, because this is where the wind took her and this is what she's feeling, to um, cut her cheese in, again, this is a harder cheese, so this is only something that you could, would want to do with a harder cheese, not the hardest, but harder, um, and cut them into triangles. Something else that you could uh, do with the triangles is have them face up like this. I call this the crown looking method. <clears throat> There you have it. I learned something new. <laughs> so um, either one of you, this is really for either of you, tell me a little bit about why we needed this renovation. What does it mean to the program? <laughs> well, Mo's been working in the kitchen for <laughs> over two years now, so why don't you tell us about the shortcomings of the existing kitchen and what the new kitchen is going to be all about. Yeah, so um, like Tim said, I've been working in the kitchen for the last two years. And with the amount of students that we have, we just don't have enough room. So with that being said, um, we are expanding the kitchen. Um, before, it was a few burners, 12 plus students, and we try, had to, you know, try to figure out how to make the space work. So um, with the new renovation coming up, we're going to have double the amount of space. We are looking forward to um, not only just the kitchen space, but the new addition of the uh, smart classroom, the teaching classroom, where we'll be able to do things like um, knife skills presentations as well as guest chef demos and things like that. So um, that's one of the reasons why we were looking to expand the kitchen. And not only that, we also are looking to build our catering program as well as to uh, maybe double or triple the amount of meals that we're already serving to the community. One of the things I would put on top of that is that, you know, this renovation is really focused on the students and we're trying to make the, a much more hospitable kitchen to our students, um, as well as making the kitchen much more efficient for our, our, our production team that works in the kitchen, providing meals to kids in out of school time programs. But the really exciting thing I think about the renovation is we're gonna actually be able to increase the number of people we're training. So we currently do we target about 60, 60 graduates per year in four classes. And when we have the new space done, we're actually going to be targeting 120 students uh, in eight classes per year. So it's really going to help us expand the scale here in Halethorpe. Wonderful. So while they were talking, um, I decided that I wanted to start adding a little bit of greenery because, oh, again, I'm, I'm always looking for different colors, textures, things that look inviting. And we had a lot of white on here, so I wanted to start putting in some fresh veggies, some crudite. Again, taste of the utmost important. What do you like to eat when you are having cheese and snacks? 
I always like a crisp veggie. So if you hear, and Chef Mo is doing something else here that I'm sure has a technical name, but I'm not sure what it is, where I'm putting the whole block of cheese here, but she's using the technique that I just showed you about cutting it into little organic pieces. And we're gonna um, have it come out of the block of cheese so it's inviting to people to continue to break pieces off of the cheese. Um, you'll see in a second what that, um, looks like and um, I'm going to continue to just add a little bit of color and some fresh veggies and crudite and um, yeah I want it to flow a little bit down here just to show everyone yeah so it looks like someone has already started please come eat me I'm inviting you to come eat me yes yes you got it you got it um, so while I'm working on adding a little bit of greenery, I want you guys to tell me a little bit about, so Foodworks is a program of the Maryland Food Bank. Mm -hmm. And what I want to understand better and have the audience understand better is what does this wonderful culinary training program have to do with food insecurity? <gasps> what does any of this have to do with the work that we are doing here at the Maryland Food Bank? Well, I always like to tee that question off and I'll give it to Mo, but the whole reason that we started the FoodWorks program was to shorten the line. And that means shortening the line of people who are food insecure. So a leading cause of hunger has to do with poverty and poverty has to do with joblessness. And so we felt that we could train people to become professional cooks um, and start them on a, on a sustainable uh, career in the, in the food service industry. Um, we could also, in our kitchen, do some feeding of kids directly and, and also uh, our network partners. And one of the things that I would like to reiterate on, Tim, is you <laughs> hit it right on the, the nose. You said we are um, allowing our students to go right into careers, and this is not just like a job right. for our students. Um, with the necessary training that we give our students, we prepare them for the work world. Uh, some of our students leave with the idea that uh, they want to work inside of a restaurant. A lot of our students are leaving with entrepreneurial skills where they're starting their own businesses. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and you know, we, we try to meet the students where they are. So, you know, some students, um, you know, don't really want to be in a restaurant um, and, and are interested in more of a kind of institution, you know, uh, kind of an institutional setting like mm -hmm. like you would find in a hospital or a senior center or, or a public school. There are lots of jobs in our public school systems in, in the city and in Baltimore County and other counties. Um, and those are culinary jobs that are, you know, often within the neighborhoods where people live. So right. and they offer benefits, they offer good pay. Um, that's really what we're trying you know, trying to do with our students when it comes to job placement. Love that. Love that. There is no smooth transition to talking about salami and meat roses. So we're just no. going to get right into that. That's okay. Perfect. Tim, you're going to participate in this part too. Does that so mean eating? 100% okay. part of the job awesome. absolutely required. Dig in. Great. Um, so let's start actually with some prosciutto. I call them pinwheels. I'm not really sure what the technical term is. I like the idea of naming them pinwheels. <laughs> yes, um, this is prosciutto. Okay. Um, so there's two ways that I like to um, display prosciutto and I'm sure many, many more. This is just a personal thing and of course eating is required. So you're going to lay it out long ways and if it's good prosciutto it should be very thin. Mm -hmm. Um, so lay it out long ways, and then you're going to roll it up the way you would if you've ever made a cinnamon bun. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> now you know how, how this works. So you're going to roll it up like that. All the way? Yep, all the way. And then you're going to roll it in like a pinwheel, hence the oh. name that I created. On top of itself that way. Yeah, and th again, there is no perfect way to do this at all. Oh, see, look, ours all look different, even though I gave the same instructions. So, um, you know, find a beautiful way to display them. Maybe make a little, make a little graveyard of roses, or. Oh, yours has a little kind of rises up in the middle. You though. got it. But it doesn't have to. Yours okay. is perfect. Perfect, and I love where you placed it. And again, we're looking for places to place it that are based on 
different textures and colors. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, keep, keep on making these pinwheels. The meat actually, when you start to um, roll up meat in this way, it, um, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So right. that's a good thing because you can fill in gaps in the board. Um, like I said, my style is very abundant. So I'm always looking for there to be absolutely no wood. Um, I want to fill every gap. But you don't have to do that. You can make yours look different. So um, we'll just do a few more of these so you okay. can actually see um, what's going on here. Now, Chef Mo, tell me while we're making prosciutto pinwheels, um, tell me why you're invested in these students and the work here. This could be a long <laughs> question for me. Um, <clears throat> I believe in the mission of Food Works. I believe in the vision of Food Works. Um, and I, I didn't have to be sold on it, you know. Um, I'm not too far removed from where the students are now. So, you know, um, I started out and um, <clears throat> I started out as a, a single mom taking care of my children, looking for an opportunity to um, be able to better myself, better my career. So um, there was a program similar to Food Works that allowed me to do that. Mm. So this was a way for you to feel like you could give back. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Close to your heart. And one of the things I pride myself on uh, when um, teaching our students as well as uh, instructing the instructors to teach the students mm -hmm. as well, you know, the only thing we ask the students is to come in every day, to show up every day on time, we'll teach you the rest. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but um, the students have so much support here in the program. It's not just the instructors that they come in contact with. We have our uh, case managers who are willing Way to, to go, coach Tim. them through you know, um, any difficulties that may arise between them coming to the program as well as, you know, completing the program. Because our goal is ultimately to see you at graduation and to place you inside of a career where you're going to make a difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How are you going on with those uh, prosciutto pinwheels? No? Oh, mine are good. <laughs> yeah, I think, we're, I think we're getting this down. Yeah, are you? Yeah. Look, I mm. taught a skill. That's right. You better watch out, Chef Mo. I might uh, take your job. Think, <laughs> the, the thing about the program that, that is, is really important and that, you know, our culinary team, training team, Chef Mo and her chef trainers, but also our, our um, workforce development folks and our case managers is, you know, they're, they're looking at the whole student. So, you know, we like to say that we're teaching knife skills and life skills. Oh, yeah. Love that. And, you know, our, our um, you know, that we, we get a lot of feedback from the employers that we place students at. And, and I would say that in the last, last few years, the, the, best, the best feedback I ever got was from uh, an employer who said he wanted to hire an entire class of 22 <gasps> students. And, you know, we kind of laugh at that now and, and say, well, you know, not everybody really wants to work necessarily in your particular operation, you know, because of what you're doing. But um, tell me about what that means. Why do you say that? And, and this was really the best quote. He said, your graduates change the culture in my kitchen. And for an executive chef to kind of tell you that, there, there's something really powerful happening. That's incredible. And I, you know, I kind of kept digging. And I said, well, what does that mean? And he said, well, your graduates, you know, they come ready to work. They come on time. Hungry. They, 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 they come in uniform. They get their station ready. And they even line the garbage can with a plastic <laughs> bag. And I don't even have to tell them. I don't even have to tell them. And so, you know, there's something that we're getting to our students that is, you know, it, it goes beyond the culinary skills that they're getting. And uh -huh. we're seeing it in how... Chef Mo and, and our chef trainers work with them. It's incredible. Um, and what they reinforce time and time again, you know, when, when students are on site with the program. So, it's incredible. Yeah. It's incredible. Let's move on. Um, let's move on to some salami roses, shall we? So the elusive salami rose. There are two ways I like to do them. Chef Mo is holding <laughs> one. <laughs> this is one of my favorite projects that I've, I've learned. So, um, they're very easy to do, but they're very impressive. And I think what people like about them is that 
um, they take a food and make it into an organic piece of, oh, look, you're making your own charcuterie board. What's going on over so there? So you're not, you're oh, not right. going to just do a shot with that glass. You're actually going to use that to That's make the roast. That's correct, Tim. But it is multi-purposeful. You thought it was just a champagne glass, but really you could use it to make a salami roast. Nice. So the point of using a champagne glass um, is that it has a small, it's narrow at the top, but you can use any jar. Just you, I happen to know that champagne jars work really well. In fact, Tim, I've never done this before, but why don't you play along with oh. us, see if that work, see if it works on that one. Um, so we're taking salami here. Um, any sort of harder circular meats. Um, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to place it right on top of the rim of your small narrow jar, and I'm just pushing it in onto it halfway across okay. just halfway through the salami okay. so it should be pretty evenly on the outside as it is on the inside and there is no other trick to this except that you just keep doing that around the entire rim and o overlapping the overlapping salami. absolutely yes overlapping and you're gonna do a few layers of that i mean the 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 more layers, technically, the more complex and full the rows will be. But you can also play with the way that you like your salami roses to look. So you can have some that are a little bit more full. You can have some that are a little bit less full. But, you know, kind of play around with what you like and just keep overlapping them and don't overlap them um, in, the, in the same manner. Just keep making your way around the jar. They're not going to... The, the, the less organic you can, the more organic you can make it, um, the more realistic it will look, basically. Um, oh, look at that. Hey, oh, there you go. Now, I'm going to show you on camera because I don't know if they could see what you okay. were doing. But basically, then you turn it upside down and you take it out and voila. I love it. Love it. And you can, Chef Mo is actually sort of playing with the leaves, so you can definitely do that. Uh, the petals, I mean, you can fluff some out a little bit. Um, you can, oh, look at that! Excellent. I think Tim is going to sub in. For Excellent. <laughs> you can place them around. You can make a bouquet of them. I mean, this is this is your charcuterie plate. Um, do as you will. Now, I am going to show us one other way of doing them that I actually love too. Um, I think you'll find your own way of doing it, whatever way you like best, especially if you're stressed about finding a glass that works. Okay. But um, this is what we're going to do. So you take, again, just has to be round meat that's sliced thinly. You are going to fold it in half. Fold it in half. Um, you're going to fold a few of them in half, so let me show you another one. Fold in half. And what you're going to do is you're going to make a row of them, all facing the same direction. So that means that the folded side should be the same side for all of it. And you're going to overlap them. Oh, now, now I've created a monster. What's happening I here, know, Tim? Sorry. What's happening here? <clears throat> Fold them in half and overlap them. Fold in half, overlap, have them all go in the same direction. And you'll see this creates a very different style of a rose. But I also love this style too. So you're going to overlap them. How many are we looking to overlap here? Um, I think you're, you'll be surprised how quickly they fold up and it's not that robust of a rose. Different from these, these are very robust. Okay. So, I mean, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. Go. I mean, I, maybe I'll add a seven, maybe an eight, but really you could stop there if you want. But the point is then you're going to roll it up. It's in a line. You're going to roll it up. Um, you'll see, you'll learn as you go along that the tighter you make it, the tighter the rose is. How you doing, Tim? So, uh, voila! Can you see that? You got that on camera? You see that? Beautiful! Now, this one happens to be peppered salami, so it actually leaves a beautiful oh, yeah. rim. Okay. Um, and again, because I like an abundant look, I only use organic matter on the platters, meaning like everything here should be edible. Some people would we'll use a tonight, toothpick. It's oh, it's perfect. perfect. Some people would use a toothpick to hold it together, but
But I prefer to just sort of sandwich or them in between different things that we're putting on the plate. You know we could use? Tell me. Some paper towels, something to wipe our hands with. There's a dish towel over there. There we go. Perfect. So tell me a little bit about what are you most looking forward to um, with the new renovations, but also pie in the sky things that you're hoping. Where is this all going, both of you, um, you know, from both of your perspectives? What is something you're looking forward to in the future with the new Food Works? Not just the space, but the program, too. Uh, that's a good question. So there's a lot um, on our planning board, really, for the next year. So in addition to the renovation, you know, we're, we're hoping to really grow the program here in Halethorpe. Um, but we've, we've done some growth over the last uh, couple of years. In fact, most recently, um, in April of this year, uh, so just nine months ago, we, we started a second teaching site um, in, in the city of Baltimore. And so wow. we're now, you know, teaching at two sites, here in our Halethorpe location and also down at the UA House on Fayette in partnership with the American Heart Association. That's a big um, deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. We've got a little bit different class there. It's kind of more oriented towards opportunity youth who are, you know, people who are 18 to 24. Uh -huh. um, but the really exciting news that's just really happened in the last week, we got the green light, uh -huh. is we're going to um, expand onto the Eastern Shore um, in the spring of 2022. Wow, so, breaking news. Yeah, so we're, we're, gonna, um, we're gonna launch the Food Works program um, at Warwick Community College in Salisbury, Maryland. Um, we're gonna have a class about the same size as we operate here in Halethorpe, so uh, about 12 graduates uh, per class. We're gonna run four classes a year, so that's another 48 uh, graduates um, coming out of, out of Halethorpe, so we'll truly be a kind of statewide um, training program at that point. So we're really excited about that. Here in Halethorpe with the renovation, we're, we're, the building is going to be beautiful when we're done. Um, so we're going to be able to have, we're going to have new equipment. Hmm. I don't know if you want to talk about, about that, Mo. We're going to have a, a fry station and a smoker. And right before you start, I just want to say that um, something about grapes, which I find very interesting, which I'm pretty sure you're going to cut that off, aren't you? Yes. I am. So, um, gr there, so again, because there's so much product on the plate, a way sometimes that you can fill up a space with abundance, but also with something that's visually appealing is by using grapes. Um, so I just very tactfully sort of stuck this bunch right here and it takes up a lot of spoon, but uh, room, and then it also creates a lot of texture and again, another opportunity for people to come and nibble and take things off. And it's Chef Mo is upset that the, the vine is showing, so she's cutting that off. So is that a specific kind of grape? <laughs> it actually is, but I don't know. A, you told me a gumdrop? It's a moondrop grape. A moondrop moon grape. I love it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's so fitting for this charcuterie plate as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So tell us about the new equipment in the new facilities. Yes. Um, we are looking to get well, our combi open it, ovens. Yeah. We're going to get some brand new combi ovens. Um, we're going to get more steamers as well as um, some fryer layers. We actually don't have any fryers in the kitchen right now, so that's you definitely that going to bring another level of um, detail have, uh, to our kitchen when training sense. our students. Um, we are also looking to bring in like uh, a few more things, um, like uh, even not necessarily only in the kitchen, but like I, I keep talking about this computer lab. This computer <laughs> lab is going to be the place where the students are, you know, they are going to be working on their resumes. They're going to be um, working on their projects. We're now able to give them projects where they can do some research and things like that. So definitely looking forward to that. I think, you know, one of the things I'd say about that computer lab, Mo, is that it's a great kind of third space for the yes. students. We, you know, we have a, we're going to have an awesome classroom that's going to be right adjacent to our um, to the kitchen, the training kitchen itself. Mm -hmm. um, but this will be another third space where they can go and do work and um, you know find some private time too. So we're excited about that. You know, you brought up an interesting point about the computer labs and your excitement for it, which um, I really I think it really speaks to our commitment to people graduating this program and being placed in Absolutely. jobs. So tell me a little bit about as a whole with the program, 
what are other things that we do to try and remove barriers for students so they can complete the program? And while you're doing that, I'm going to take some dried fruit and um, layer them and stack them. All right. <clears throat> uh, some of the things that we do to um, break down some of those uh, challenges that the students may have is uh, we are in the process of offering our students stipends of $50 for the first six weeks and $100 for the uh, remainder six weeks of the program. So that way um, they're able to, um, it'll just give them one less thing that they have to worry about. We also offer uh, stipends for gas so that the students can get back and forth. If not a gas car, we also offer them bus passes as mm. well. So those are some of the things. Uh, Tim, did you want to touch on a few others? Sure. We, so COVID really brought us kind of some new developments mm -hmm. in the program. <laughs> we, you know, we shifted the program from being five days on site to being three days on site and then two days online. So this kind of hybrid model of on-site, online, we started to really focus on digital literacy as a, as a core skill for our students. So we provide our students with a, a tablet um, to use while they're in the program. And um, you know, Chef Mo was um, kind of also affectionately known as the, as the Zoom queen at the beginning of COVID because she pretty quickly got onto Zoom with, with, our, with our students while they were remote in that first class that hit when COVID really hit. Mm -hmm. um, and right after that, we found this great product called ruby.com, spelled like the word ru, R-O-U-S-B-E.com. And it's an online culinary, culinary program with thousands of hours and, and, multi, and a whole library of content, including some Jacques Pepin Foundation content with wow. Jacques Pepin involved. And so we give our students a, a year-long subscription to Ruby and we integrate Ruby into our curriculum so, so we can assess students. Students can take pictures of work they've done at home and post it onto the site in their account. Wow. Um, and, the, and, you know, there's more content there than we can cover in 12 weeks. So they get to keep it for a year. So they get to, and we've heard from alumni like, oh, yeah, I did this on Ruby. And, um, oh, that's awesome. So we've, we've really been able to, to shift the program to kind of keep it really interesting and also adding new learning experience for the students while they're in the program. Another great thing about Ruby.com, it's recognized by the American Culinary Federation. Yeah. And I, I think that speaks volumes to the program that we have and the information that we're giving to our students. How much does it cost for students to be in this program? Well, it doesn't really cost them anything. Um, all of our students participate, you know, uh, are, are in the program, you know, what we, call, we call it on scholarship. Um, but uh, it, it, it's really it's free for the students who, who are here. Right, which um, really sticks to our commitment that we are really going to remove any barrier it takes to, yeah. to shorten the line, That's to right. use your phrase. Yeah. Before we move on, I just want to talk about Cracker Show fast. Yeah. So um, often people have crackers either on the board or off. Um, charcuterie boards are very, very perishable. Um, and... I highly recommend making them the day of. Um, doesn't have to be the moment of. I say the day of because these things can sit outside as long as it's um, a nice temperature inside. Um, so the cracker situation is really based on how long the cracker and the charcuterie board is going to be out. So sometimes I like the crackers to be actually in the board because they look beautiful. Again, it looks inviting. Um, it's all like a one-stop shopping. Like I'm going to take my cracker and I'm going to uh, put a grape on it and then I'm going to put a pickle on it and then I'm going to put some cheese and meat oh, yeah. and a few spreads and I'm done. But also don't shy away from having a basket next to it with lots and lots of crackers. So. Um, and what kind of crackers do you recommend? I see we have a variety of crackers over there. Yeah, I like variety because, again, I just, I think everybody, it's a build-your-own situation. Okay. Um, but, you know, I, I find these to be particularly pretty. But those, these are different than just like a standard water cracker, too, right? Um, also, these happen to be garlic flavored. These are all more plain. Mm -hmm. So I think the variety, because everybody likes it a little different. Some mm -hmm. people like plain crackers. Some okay. people like, you know, the flatbreads that have like the everything but the bagel sort of seasoning on them. Um, Which but, to be my favorite. 
is <laughs> so um, so we can either add some or not. It really doesn't matter. And then the other thing I was going to say is that these were just special for uh, tonight, but they're chocolates that are very harvesty um, decorated, which I thought would be a lovely thing to put on the board because it's sort of harvest season. But again, um, this is just something I randomly found. Never once was told it was for a charcuterie board, but I <laughs> thought, what a great way Absolutely. to sort yeah. of, you know. You can tie in. Because it's the holiday. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Holiday yeah exactly. 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 So um, how many people have graduated from FoodWorks, by the way? As of September, the end of September, 429 people have graduated from FoodWorks in the last uh, 11, nearly 11 years. Wow, <laughs> that's and a lot. A couple hundred more have, have been in some part of the program. So That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. So um, how many more students do you want to put into this, into this world? Well, you know, once we um, have our renovation done and we've expanded to Warwick, that will actually take us from, you know, right now we, we target between 85 and 90 students between our two sites. And when we add classes here and add Warwick, that's going to add another approximately 100 students. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be at about 180 to 190 uh, uh, graduates per year, which will be, which is quite a that's incredible quite a scale up. Yeah, we're yeah, excited though. Um, I think one thing that we've learned is we we really have our program down now. Um, you know, Chef Mo has two great chef trainers with really rich experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, who are who are great at leading the class. We've we've got um, a workforce development manager and a and a case manager who are focused on, on placing students you put some nuts and, around? and yeah, helping nuts students yet. while they're in the program, um, and you know we you know when we expand to Salisbury we're going to be adding another chef trainer another workforce wow. development specialist another case management specialist um, and the same when we add a class uh, we add a second group of classes here at the end of next year or second half of next year. So we have quite a team. Um, and they're all focused on the workforce development aspects of what we're doing at FoodWorks. Love that. Love that so much. Maybe one day they'll all come back and work in our program. Some of them already do. We have uh, yeah. one, of, one of Chef Mo's uh, um, chef trainers is a graduate um, hmm. from several years back. And we have uh, someone who works on our kitchen production team who's also a graduate. That's <clears throat> incredible. That's incredible. Okay, so um, what Jeff Mo and I are doing, because we can't leave well enough alone, <laughs> is um, basically I'm now looking for uh, spots of the board by turning it um, that are bare. Um, and she's adding some more crudite. Those are tomatoes of an interesting color. Um, those are those heirloom tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Love. Tomatoes. And I'm kind of placing these chocolates that look like nuts around or look like, get in there, Tim. Don't be shy. One um, thing we should do is we should add the crackers. Like, I was thinking we should do this with the crackers. Go for it. We should go right in here. Go for it, Tim. Right next to the, where the Tim board is. <laughs> I've, I, eat, I've eaten a lot of charcuterie. I can show you... Um, <clears throat> The way that other people, the, the way that you can sort of stack it, we have a lot going on here, but you can tuck them in here like this, like that. Oh, yeah. And it also Great. adds a little height to it does. the board as well. Yeah, and that's an important thing. I, I'm always looking for the height too, because if it all looks flat, it's not very inviting. Um, it looks kind of stoic. Mm. Looks kind of one dimensional, but you you it can great. yeah. It's an it's a, it's a little inviting little little thing, huh? You can also have them sit up like this. That's another thing that people do. Um, but I'm personally a big fan of them being on the side because I think that people don't want to. You know, some people don't like their ketchup touching their plate. Right, right. That's that's how I feel about crackers. <laughs> but again, you don't you don't have to subscribe to my rules. These are just guidelines. Crackers could be on something that you don't really like to eat. You might exactly. like everything else, but you might not like where the crackers are. Exactly. Well, are there any questions good. out there? Anyone? 
ones or no? No. We're good. Well, I think we're kind of finishing up here. Again, I'm obsessively covering holes because that's what I do, but you don't have to. Um, I like the idea of maybe adding a few berries. Go for it. To kind of mm -hmm. put some color in there. Mm -hmm. Love it. I thought you said you haven't done this before. I haven't, but mm. visually I know what it should look like. Go right. for it. Go for it. I think that'll be good. I'm just going to add to Please, just I kind of love it. it nice. Love it. So, is there anything you haven't told us about FoodWorks? It's renovations or the future of the program that you really, really want us all to know. Wow, that's a that seems to me to, me to be a loaded question, Mo. Do you have a? I, so one thing I love about our program that not a lot of people people get a chance to see is I love how some of our students come in, they are so raw and mm. I'll just say that. But when we when they leave, you know, they leave with professionalism. Mm -hmm. They leave with um, a sense of pride. Pride. You know, they take ownership. Mm -hmm. um, they learn the importance of wearing your chef wipes and you know, not sagging them down to, you know, underneath your belt, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, the students, they come in and we teach them, they leave out. We actually now have students who have went out into the industry and they've hired some of their classmates. Oh, wow. So I think <laughs> Full that circle. Is yeah. That's yeah, incredible. I, it's, to, it's, it's a complete life changing program. And, you know, I, um, I often say that, you know, the four best days at the Maryland Food Bank are the four graduation days we yeah. hold. That's incredible. And yeah. so part of the growth, part of my secret agenda and the growth to the UA house and the growth out to Warwick is I want more graduation days. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we can get up to, you know, potentially 16 graduation days a year. That's pretty awesome for four times as many great days, because if, if you've ever been to one of our graduations, either in person or even online, then okay. the last few we've done online have been great. You know, there's, you know, you're going to tear up. I, I'm just going to tell you. It's, right. uh, it's amazing what our graduates, how they have changed their lives and how excited and they are to kind of get on with their career once, once they've left the program. And, you know, these are the same people who 12 weeks earlier, when they first come in, mm -hmm. they can barely look in the eye. Right. They can't say their name. Right. You know, you have to really pull, feel like you're pulling teeth to, when, when you're talking to them. But by the end of the program, they're telling jokes, they're playing pranks, they're, they've made up names for people. Giving I mean, people yeah. a life purpose, really. Um, they yeah. Know now, yes, Chef. Yes, you Chef. Know. That's um, right. So this program warms my heart. It warms my heart. Um, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to make a difference in every student life that comes through the program. Well, that's wonderful. And like our charcuterie board, though, I was really just thinking about how um, we have a lot of things that are integrated into one and they make it just a beautiful and welcoming and warming, um, edible, delicious food. But really FoodWorks is that to the Maryland Food Bank. It's really one asset of what we do that fits in with a puzzle of food insecurity in the state of Maryland. It's really a bright light of the Maryland Food Bank. And um, it's really a wonderful program that we're happy to tell everybody about, honestly. That's awesome. I think we have a question. Oh. Someone wanted to know what are the spices that you add in and what does it add to the board? Spices. Probably so we can talk about the nuts. Um, I, oh, the herbs. I got it. Um, yeah. So I really use the herbs for its look. Plenty of people like fresh herbs, and I've seen, like, this is rosemary, for example. And a lot of people, like, rosemary is very common in cheeses. A lot of people's cheeses have rosemary in it. I personally use it, though, because I think it's beautiful to display. And, again, I only use organic matter that theoretically anybody could eat. Um, so I just use it for its look. It's also very fragrant and beautiful, and it brings that sort of Christmassy, holiday-y oh, feel yeah. to everything just from its look. 
And Chef. I'm also going to add what I learned from our last uh, charcuterie classes. Yes. You actually can use this as a placeholder for your roles as mm -hmm. well. Yes. So shout out to Carly Ford, <laughs> teaching Chef Mo a new trick. Yes, yes. Um, also, I have used before also like parsley and dill, just anything thyme. that looks, thyme, anything that looks beautiful, but also it does add a wonderful fragrance. I'll, yes. I'll say that, yeah, for sure. Any other questions? No, we're good? Well, I think this is a great place to pause or say goodbye. Um, I want to, again, thank everybody who watched tonight. If you're someone who is already invested in our work, thank you very much. Continue being invested. If you're someone who wants to learn more about FoodWorks or any of the other programs at the Maryland Food Bank, please reach out. Um, you'll get a follow-up email. If you just like this program, the virtual culinary experience, and you like learning and hearing from us, please, there's going to be more. There's going to be another series in 2022. Oh, yeah. Stay tuned. It'll be a different topic. Um, mm -hmm. But nonetheless, we will learn something. Oh, we yeah. will teach something. It'll be food related, all the things. And um, thanks for tuning in tonight. Do you guys all want to maybe dig in and make our first? Yeah, I, think that's I actually want one of yeah, these crackers. Well, that's really a good idea. <laughs> exactly you those. Do it. This is a spreader. And I want some oh, cheese too. Yeah. yeah, what else can I maybe put this in or the nuts? Yeah. Totally. We should also tell people to stay tuned for when we announce the new kitchen being open because we're going to have lots of opportunity for people to come and visit oh. the, new, the new kitchen. Me, 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 me. So I that, want to be there for that, please. Put it on your 2022 list. Can't wait. Well, we'll have another virtual culinary experience before that where we can give you all the details, I'm sure. But thank you very much, everyone. Cheers. 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 Mmm. 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 Great job.